We'll spend a little bit more time talking about cardiac output. I think it's the least intuitive of all of these factors that impact your rate of rise of the gas. Um, you would think that by increasing your cardiac output, you would increase the, um, the inhalational agent delivery to the brain and that would increase your speed. However, it is the opposite. Um, lowering your cardiac output will increase the speed of onset. So let me convince you why that happens. Let's suppose we have blood flowing through this capillary system at five liters per minute. And we'll separate this blood into sort of three compartments. One here, one here, and one here. So this will be the first compartment that sees this alveoli and participates in gas exchange. And then after that, our second compartment will enter this area and participate in gas exchange, and then our third compartment. Let's use DES this time instead of SIVO just to change it up. So the blood gas partition coefficient for DES is 0 0.42. So just a little bit less soluble than SIVO. Let's still breathe in 10 particles. One, two, three four, five, six. So first, this compartment number one of blood will participate in gas exchange with this alveoli, and we will let the blood and the gas phase reach an equilibrium here, which will mean that some of these gas particles dissolve in that first compartment of blood. So we'll get three dissolved in this first compartment and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. This math works nicely because the ratio of three to seven is exactly uh, 0 0.42. Remember that the amount of gas in this alveoli or group of alveoli is, is a fixed amount until we take a new breath. So this is all the gas that's left over to participate in gas exchange with the second and third compartment now. So now let's look at what happens when this alveoli exchanges gas with the second compartment. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gas particles left. So to establish a blood gas partition coefficient of 0 0.42, we're going to move less particles into this one. So we'll actually just move two into the second group of blood that sees the alveoli instead of three. And this two to five ratio is um, 0 0.4. So we're sort of modeling close to what our blood gas coefficient is, which is 0 0.42. Then finally, when this third compartment of blood sees the alveoli and participates in gas exchange with it, there's only five gas particles left over. So for these to reach equilibrium, even less of the gas particles have to move over. It works out to be actually 1.5 particles here, and then leaving us with three and a half in our alveoli. The saturation of this third compartment of blood that saw the alveoli is only half that of the first that saw the alveoli. So as a whole, this amount of blood that's sent to the central nervous system is not going to be as saturated as this first group that saw the alveoli. Let's just pretend that um, the maximum you could fit into the blood would be four in any one of these components. And that's what we would want the blood to be saturated at to reach one mac. We have instead three plus two plus 1.5. So we have only 6.5 out of a total of 12. So we have just over 50% of the partial pressure need, needed to create one mac. Now let's do an example where you have two-thirds of that cardiac output. So we'll do 3.33 liters per minute. And I just chose that so that I can show you two compartments of blood flowing through in the same amount of time. 
with our initial 10 particles of gas that we breathe in, this first compartment, when it participates in gas exchange, will be the same, same story as last time, where three of these will dissolve in the blood. And now when this second compartment of blood moves through and participates in gas exchange with the alveoli, we'll have two. So let's say this, um, again, each of these uh, blood compartments would be fully saturated if they had four um, dissolved particles. So here we have uh, three plus five, or it's three plus two, it's five out of a total of eight. And then we can say that this blood is just over 60% saturated. So just over 60% of the way to um, producing the partial pressure required for one MAC. For desflurane, the MAC is uh, about 6.2%, which corresponds to a partial pressure of 47 millimeters of mercury. So we're saying if we want that, for, that full one MAC, um, we need our CNS partial pressure to be 47, or the partial pressure of the blood being delivered to the CNS to be 47. Um, unfortunately, in both of these cases, our partial pressure is going to be less than that because our 12 out of 12 saturation here would be our um, 47 millimeters of mercury. So here we'd have about 25 millimeters of mercury, and here we'd have about 29 millimeters of mercury. So in our state with the decreased cardiac output. So a third less cardiac output here actually made the um, partial pressure of the gas being delivered to our brain higher than when our cardiac output was high. And again, that's reflected in our fraction of alveolar gas that's left over. So here there is three and a half that are left over. So your FA over FI is 3.3 .3, or 0 0.33 and in this case you have one two three four five particles left over so your fa over fi is 0 0.5 once again demonstrating that your lower fraction of alveolar gas corresponds to there being a lower partial pressure of gas in the blood, therefore, lower partial pressure being delivered to the central nervous system. And when you have a higher FA or fraction of alveolar gas, you have a higher partial pressure of that gas in the blood and a higher amount or a higher partial pressure of gas being delivered to the nervous system where it has its effect.